Oh, I'm good, brother. You? All good, my mate. All good. How are you feeling? Um, as you can see, I'm healing really quickly, which is good. Uh, Wolverine. <laughs> I'm feeling fucking a fat though, man. I've ate so much. <laughs> no, I bet you have, mate. Especially yeah. seeing that photo of you earlier on the mornings away, and Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I am like fucking, I must be about 85 already now. Mental. It's mad I was we've wondering, all... mate. Yeah, we've got mate. Okay, sorry. Go on. I was going to say, before we like jumped into that, I was going to say, what was camp like for this fight? Because oh. you were obviously in the shape of your life, weren't you? Yeah, 14 weeks. Um, but it was about 12 or 14 weeks, and the proper camp was about eight. But yeah, mate, best shape of my life. Um, done everything properly, took it serious. You know, one thing I said to, uh, to Dave Alman, uh, um when I lost against Lindsay, everything was half assed. And you've seen that, you've seen the difference in the performance against Johnny yeah. Graham than what, than what I did against Lindsay. Because if I fought like I did, Against Jake Lindsay, like I did against Johnny Graham, I probably would have, I probably would have got Jake out of there really quickly. Um, so it just goes to show, you know, that I've always, I've, I've, I've always had the potential, I've always had the talent. I just needed to actually put the fucking effort in and do a proper job, live my life like a proper uh, professional athlete, and uh, it really paid off, hasn't it? So yeah, yeah, definitely. And your honest opinion, mate, like. Going into this fight, what was yours and Sam and your coach's thoughts on Johnny Graham? Do you know what? We never really have many. Um, one of the one of the the worst things about this fight was I knew Johnny was good. I'd heard feedback from people in Leeds that said he was a good lad, he's a good boxer, and he was strong. I never really believed he was as strong as he was, to be honest. Only because I looked at his pro record and that. Um, and yeah, he dropped people. He never really knocked anyone out, so I didn't think he was a massive banger. But then again, he wasn't. He was fighting at a lot lower weight than he was uh, on Saturday night. Um, but we didn't know what to expect, to be honest. Um, if when, when I but all, all all we knew was if I got on the on my toes and boxed, I'd win the fight. Um, and I couldn't get stuck into a brawl with him because from what we've seen from both fights he done is he liked to come forward, put pressure on, close the distance, go you know go into the body and. And, um, and and stop the opponents. So we knew it was going to be a tough fight, but to be honest, I just didn't think it was going to be as tough as it was. Yeah, right. and what, what what were your thoughts on Johnny in the build-up of the fight when you first come face-to-face with him at the press conference and that? Uh, I don't know. I, I thought it was a bit of a prick, to be honest, but I think he thought the same about me. Um, I think Johnny's like, he's an older guy, and he, I, th- I think probably like... He's, obviously been around longer in the career and stuff and probably sees me as a bit of a cocky bastard coming through which they all do but that that's that's obviously that's just the way i build myself you know what i mean in order to get the attention um but yeah now nah, um i didn't know him really any and i think from what i got from him was I, I didn't like him he didn't like me i think we both sort of suppose hide it to the fact that it's because we're fighting each other but you seen that yeah. on, on the Wayne day, like obviously, I think he lashed out at me then at behind closed doors and stuff, like calling me a gobby cunt and stuff. But I think I just got to him, and uh, that that's obviously the game plan. Isn't it? But yeah, actually, you know, I've spoke to him, voice noted him since, and um, like I say, he's just a fucking tremendous fighter, to be honest. Um, and I think he go a long way in the sport. Yeah, he definitely will, mate. And it was cold when it made the fight, the build up, and that in the ring pointing at each other, and that was yeah. fucking sick. One an epic thought of that. Yeah, it was unbelievable, mate. Like, I've never got in a ring. So normally, I get in and I will switch off either. I switch off from Johnny. I switch off from all my opponents. I'll get in there. It's not beef when I'll get in there. Um, I've had I've had high animosity fights with beef, like James Kennelly and that. It was local. There was a lot of beef in yeah. there. But, but normally, I get in a switch off. And I remember getting through the rope share and Johnny fucking eyeball fucked me from the second I got in there. And all I was thinking was, <laughs> I thought to sort of like lap it, in, lap it up now, and like look at the crowd and that. But I just didn't want to break the eye contact because I didn't want to lose. I thought if I break the eye contact there and, and break that gaze, he's just going to win. Like, do you know what I mean? He's going to win that first battle. So for, I think for the whole of the fucking introduction, we stared, in, <laughs> we stared in the eyes. He give me the gun finger. I give him the gun finger back. It was just fucking. You could feel. You could cut the tension from an old thing there. And I thought, you know what, like, I remember looking at him thinking, you know what, he really thinks he's going to come fucking take my head off. 
uh, as exactly like what he thought. And I think you, you can see that in his, his post fight interviews. I think he's gutted because he genuinely like was coming to hurt me. He wanted to fucking batter me. Like he said, he said <laughs> I, I think he said on a, in one of the podcasts, he goes, you know, I was just gutted because I just really wants to fucking batter him. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't, doesn't that tell you how much somebody don't, wants to fucking beat you? Like, proper, but yeah, yeah, man. Mad. So go, going into the first round of the fight, how were you feeling? What was your thoughts like at the end of the round? Yeah, look, it's mad. Um, I'm getting it. I'm getting that experience now, Matt. Tenth fight. I actually didn't really get all the nerves and that in the belly. It was more um, anxiety of like I didn't know what was going to happen. I just didn't know what to expect from Johnny. So Johnny's had everything from me. He's seen me get knocked down. He's seen me lose. He's seen me get knocked out. He's seen me being in fights. He's seen me box. And I, I think he got to see every sort of angle I was going to come from. But I said it to Simon before the fight. I was like, I'm just worried, man. And Simon's like, well, I was like, I don't know what he's going to do. Like, I'm fucking, like, just, just so, like, frustrated here that I haven't seen him go to, like, the trenches. Because I sort of knew it was going to be that fight. I knew it was going to be a tough fight. I didn't think I was going to walk through him at all. And that first round, when it went in, I, I thought I won the first round. I was like, yeah, I've, I've got... I've, got the better of him there especially at the end of the round I think I, I ended up landing the better cleaner shots cleaner punches um, but he, I think he did wobble me towards the end of the round I think it was the last 10 seconds I sort of come back to the corner and I was a bit fuzzy headed like where I think he just sort of caught me and I backed off a bit because every time he caught me and he hurt me I just backed off I didn't want to get engaged then so I've got that experience you see not to fucking hold my feet then matured a yeah. bit now rather than trying to run, trying to scrap a try and get on my bike a bit. But yeah, after the first round, I just fucking, I knew I was in for a tough fight. Like I thought, Jesus, because I fucking, I hit him with some good shots as well. Like I know I hurt him, but he, like I say, he kept coming. So yeah, yeah, yeah definitely mad. Was it, the, I think it was the first round you cut him on it, didn't you? Cut him over his eye in the first round. Yeah, but I said, you know what, mate? Like, honestly, like my knuckles are like blades. I've got really small fists, ain't it? Probably not the smallest fist in the division. It's mental. But the way they're built, and I don't think you can see that because the lock of broke, but these knuckles are really, like, pointy. And I say to everyone, like, the proper cutters, the, the cutters fist these are, like, everyone <laughs> I fight, they cut them to pieces, mate. Like, they're the worst push you can get it by. And uh, the first couple of rounds, like, that first round, I seen him cut on both eyes. I know it was bothering him because when I was watching the fight back, he was constantly, like, rubbing his face. It's horrible when you get cut. I don't really suffer with cuts. I've only, I only suffered with that that one there. But I didn't really suffer with it through the fight where he cut early, to be fair. Well, they're just the fucking knuckles, I am, and they're not blades. And when you knocked Johnny down, did you think, right, I've got him here? Did you think you were going to get him out of there? I, do you know what? I don't know what I knocked him down with. I sort of threw the right hand. I was like, so we, we everyone knows my game plan, that, that overhand right. It was hard because... I, was, I didn't feel like, I, I think I just overthought the situation too much. Um, and as much as a box well, I could have done a lot better with that with that shot. And I didn't time it properly, but I thought I'd, I didn't know what I'd land. I'd, I don't know what I hit him with. So when I dropped him, I just seen him, he got back up. When, it, when he raised his hands out to me and started, because he was like an angry man in there, man. He just raised his hands and I just seen his fucking mouth talking to me. And I was like, <laughs> like, like that's, that's why I just got back on my bike again. I thought... I've won the round. The first thing I think is, I know how the rounds work. I thought I've won the round at uh, 10 8 there. Like, it's a, it's a big round, especially when you've just won the first round. Like, you've got a big head start when you yeah. get knocked down. So, nah, I, I, I weren't going to go in for the kill, though, because he just didn't look wobble. He didn't get up slowly. He wasn't hurt as much. I could see. It's like, like, a, like a flash knockdown, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I could see I hurt him. Like, it was a solid left hand, but like, when, after I watched it, but like, he, did, he didn't stumble up with stuff like he got to his feet and he was aware of what was going on. So I just had to switch on and I think, right, can't rush this. I've just got to get back boxing again. And then obviously the ter the tables turned and Johnny ended up dropping you. What were you, what were you thinking then? <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember getting dropped, to be honest. I think. If you watch it, it doesn't look like a clean bunch. He comes in really closely, doesn't it? And it's a short right hand. Um it's just one of them, like, I think, to be fair, like, I could say, oh, you know, I shouldn't have got caught, but I think it was just so in the moment, like, with what was going on with the fight, it was just one of them. I just got caught and it was a really fucking good shot. Good right hand and it put me down. Um, I went down quite heavy, to be fair, but I got back up, which proves time and time again because everybody's fucking still sold on about that fucking knockout that happened to me in 2019. 
Look how many times I've been dropped now by fucking hard hitters and got straight back up and battled on. Jake Lindsay yeah. done it with him. Uh, Jeremiah Riggs has done it with him. Johnny Graham has done it with him. Like I, I get dropped, I just get back up and I fucking continue the fight as normal. Like I manage to sort of hold myself well, carry myself well now. Um, that's experience and stuff, and I'm, I'm, my chin's fucking tested. Do you know what I mean? Tested against some solid opponents as well. Been dropped with some fantastic shots and get straight back up and battle on. Um, but yeah, cool. Yeah, I was going to say that it's proven now, mate. You've got a chin. You're always going to yeah. have haters in the background that we're going to bring that oh, fight right. up, aren't you? They're never going to go away. But it's proven, mate. All the fights you've been in now, you've proven, 100 percent got a chin, yeah. haven't you? And he's 100 percent. It's one of the hardest I've been hit, boy. I mean, Jeremiah Reed is still up there, but I think I, th I think more the fact with Johnny because he, he loaded with Jeremiah he doesn't load up as much, but Johnny was loading up with every shot he said so. When the ones that I missed, I missed, but the ones that I got caught by, they hurt. Like, do you know what I mean? Because he weren't, he wasn't fucking pussy to foot, pussy footing around. He even said it himself. Like he wanted to fucking get the digs in on me, and I did feel him. Like I did definitely feel him when I was in there. Like they weren't nice, but it's like myself, I, I was carrying a bit of power myself, and I know that I was throwing bangs back to be fair, and I was landing. So yeah, it was um, it, it was a good match up to be honest, stylistically. And you were both going in on the body, weren't you? Like, when I've watched back at the footage that we've got, you can't half hear the body shots fudding in off each other, like. Yeah. Yeah, it, we, do you know what, though? I've conditioned my body well for this because he loves the body. He loves going to the body on them last two fights. And I just knew, like, he'd look at me and think, go to the body. But um, you have to be a fucking... You have to be, like, an inside fighter to get hit to the body. And the only time he was hitting me to the body is when we was in the clinch work. Couldn't really get me on the way in because I was moving too well. My footwork yeah. was too good, you see. So every time, that's that's the thing that people underestimate. I've seen a few comments about like people going, "Oh, he's on his boy running away." It's not running away. Like if you watch that fight, it's still one of the best five rounders in BKFC UK history. And the end that's of the hard. day, when I'm getting on my bike, that's me being clever because I need to pick my my moments. Like I'm not a fighter. I'm not. I'm not built. I'm not built to be a fucking brawl. I'm not built to stand in front of someone and smash ten ten tons of shit out of each other. If you want to go watch that, go watch the fucking. That triangle promotion, do you know what I mean? Because that's brawling. This is bare knuckle fighting, yeah, but it's, there's a skill involved, do you know what I mean? Everyone who's been in BKFC, who's come from the top, have come from the top level of UFC and boxing and stuff, there's skill involved. And that's what people want to see as well. They don't just want to see people punching the fuck out of each other. Um, yeah. So, yeah, using my footwork and that, 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 been, that really played a part because because I was moving so much, just Johnny couldn't settle, you see. That's why he kept calling me on. He didn't like the movement. Simon kept saying it. He was like, you don't look. Kept going mad, going, keep fucking moving. He don't like it. So every time I'm moving, I could see him. He kept waving me on and going, come on, come on. Fucking come here. Because he knows if I <laughs> held my feet with him, he'd have the fight that he wanted. But every time I moved, I was letting that. Obviously, in my head, I'm thinking, the time's going down and around here. And I'm just picking picking little shots and just getting away with winning the round. And then when I have to dig deep in them times, when he, when he comes in and closes me down, that's... That's the time when I, I let a flurry go and then I get back on my bike again. And how did it feel, bro, like coming off two controversial losses, obviously getting your hand raised in one of the best fights we've seen this year, if not the best? Yeah, I think, you know, like it's phenomenal. Like, you know yourself, like, you know how much I've been through. Um, yeah. 16 months in activity as well. 16 months I've not been in a, in a ring bare knuckle. That's a long fucking time. There's not many fighters out there bare knuckle that have been out in the ring that time, but that long, that can come back at that level and do that performance, like, that's what people need to understand as well, that's not an active fighter there, that's that's a fighter coming off a 16-month layoff, going into one of the biggest fights of his life for about, and putting on one of the performance of his careers, um, it, yeah, mate, it, it's like the best feeling in the fucking world, like, and really needed it, it's not even... It's not even the, the bout. As much as I love the bout so much, I needed the win, and that's what everyone yeah. sort of sleeping on me. Like I said to you, Johnny's a banana skin because he's such a good fucking fighter. He's such a hard fight. It's like if I lose to Johnny because he's not really known, that's it, I've lost everything. If I win, I was expected to win. So I needed to do something special when I won, and that's exactly what I've done, man. I'm just fucking pleased to be back in a, a, on the win column, man. I needed it. Yeah, and like the attention and everything you're getting as well, mate. Like all the being on talk spot, IFL TV, being in the newspapers, McGregor sharing it with story yeah. every day since the event, mate. It must be some buzz, bro. Yeah, it's proper, mate. I'm, like it's, I'd say it's exactly what I needed. It's like exactly what I wanted. Um, 
unbelievable. Like, you know what I mean? The, the fight was amazing. There's so much publicity coming from it. My, McGregor shared me count, countless amount of times. Um, Talk Sport, The Sun as well, The Sun Magazine, The Irish Sun, The Mirror. Like, it, how many people have seen that as well? Like, I even put up um, the Guinness, the fucking famous Guinness group on Facebook. I put a picture up with like a Guinness mate and it's like two and a half thousand fucking likes and there's hundreds of people commenting saying, well done, unbelievable fight that don't even follow me or friends with me. So it's just the exposure that I've done, you know what I mean? And like I always wanted to do in this game, I wanted to build myself as a bare knuckle fighter to be the most popular, well-known, biggest bare knuckle star in the UK without coming from any type of sort of background where like the UFC. And I just feel, I don't think I'm far away from doing that now. Um, a couple more fights and I could be world champion. Yeah, 100%, bro. And I know you're going to have a bit of a rest now, mate, after coming out of a tough fight. But what's next for Conatini? Because you've got the power back in your hands now, bro, yeah. haven't you? You've got a title and that. What's next for you? What's your aims? Well, obviously, Rico and Trout are fighting for the world title. And obviously, that's all I ever wanted to fight for was the world title. But I think now with the European strap becoming available, um, I think a fight in Europe is definitely on the cards. I've already spoke to the European promoter. We've spoke about it, obviously, haven't we, ourselves. And I think yeah. fighting for a, a 165 European strap and making history again, becoming the first ever European top champion at Welterweight, as well as the UK, like that's something for the history books. The, the world title has been won now a few times already. So I'll never be the first. But now to say that I'll be the first in the Europe and the UK, be unbelievable. So that's what I think that's what's next for me. It keeps me active. It hopefully gets me out before the end of the year. I can get another big win, another performance, keep in the gym, um, and become a champion of Europe. And then no doubt after that, the only fight next for me is a world title fight. Yeah, definitely. And there's a geezer over Demons over the other side of Europe, isn't there? Who uh, when we yeah. went over to Bulgaria, me, you, George and Maka. You yeah. had a bit of back and forth with him, didn't you? When he won his fight, you called him out, and it's a bit weird how how, it, how it's come about, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that Vaso uh, uh, Bakacevic on your back of it, on your backy bitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's, uh, he's called him out. Didn't I? I was like, "You little man, ain't gonna go nowhere." But listen, I've wa I watched him. Uh, he's a decent fighter, but he's not as good as the fighters that I've beat. Nowhere near as good as the fighters I've beat. Um, he's five and zero. He's a big name in Europe. I think he's massive in Serbia from where he's on. Massive in the Balkans in Bulgaria. I think it's a phenomenal fight for me. Another, another fucking a fight to go back. And do you know what? The old Conatini's gone now. Um, the old Conatini of wanting to, to, to not fight again and go on the piss and reap the rewards of becoming a novelty on the streets, going out or drinking all the time, being like this fucking party. Head. That's disappeared now. That mentality is gone. The first thing I'm thinking every day, speaks to my missus, like I'm sitting in the house and I'm thinking, I want to get in the gym. Like, I can't wait. Like, I'm having a week off. I'm getting back in Monday. I'm ready to fucking go again. Get back on, you know what I mean? Get back on the ladder again. Yeah, mint. Um, I'm ranked fifth in the world. Do you know, I'm back in the fucking rankings. I'm I'm, I'm back hot, hot property. Like, again, everybody's talking my name. Um, and I want even more, you know what I mean? And I think when I'm in this mindset, I'm dangerous. I'm happy. Um, and I just think that the path of losing to Jake Lindsay just was the universe putting me on a complete new path. A, a, a path where... There's titles, which there is already now I'm champion. And there's going to be more titles. And then there's going to be the world title. Um, because let's be honest, mate. Some people have got world title fights easy. Like, I'm not slagging him, but obviously the man who's fighting for world title now, he's had two easy fights against Bums. And then he's had one decent fight against a lad who's fucking on the, on the end of his career. I've had to jump through hoops. You know what I mean? Jake Lindsay, Jeremiah Riggs, Joe Almore, Johnny Graham. Four fucking extremely hard fights. That I was, you know what I mean? That, that are 50 50 fights in every fight to come through. I've come through and, um, you know, I'm just ready to reap the rewards now, win the European and go on and win the world. Yeah, like I say, mate, your resume now is good, isn't it? Like, it's good that Johnny gave you that fight, mate, because he proved yeah. what he's all about, didn't he? Yeah, 100%, mate. He's a solid opponent, like. I said to you the next day after the fight, didn't I? I said, uh, it'll take, so he'll take some beating him out of anyone yeah. in the UK. Yeah, I, I'd, I, honestly, now I'd like to, um, because I'd, I don't think I'm going to defend the UK. I, that that was for me it was to be UK champion. I think for me, I want to be European now and work my way up to the up to the world level. But I do think whoever fights Johnny next in the UK, he's going to beat. 
Um, I, I, I think other than me in the UK at 165, I don't care who else is, who is out there. I think Johnny's Johnny's second best, basically. I don't I don't just say that because he gave me a tough fight. I just know that he's, he's, he's fucking durable. He's tough, lad. He takes the shots. He's got power. Um, and he's got all the attributes, which I didn't think he had until he, he showed me in there. So I think, mate, he's a fucking really hard fight for a lot of fighters at the top of 165. Probably one of the one of the best up there in, in BKFC, in my opinion. Definitely. But he just needs he just needs the wins and he needs the fight. So in reality, like he'd need like an American opponent. He needs to go over to America and beat top level opponents to show the do you know what I mean to show the promotion that he's at that level. It's just if he gets that opportunity. Yeah, of course, bro. And your mate, George Forp, was fighting. What was it like to see him get the win? Oh, amazing. Like, um, you know, George George has obviously fucking had a tough camp like I have. And uh, it, obviously, George, when he's, in my, he's a stable mate who trains with me every single fucking day, mate. Um, we've been to New York <laughs> together. We went to Bulgaria. Like, we're not fucking really good mates. And then we train every single day. So you're basically living with each other in that gym. Towards today, so yeah, it was amazing to see George get the win. He's two and zero now in BKFC. It's really good. Uh, it's unfortunate that he's broke his hand, but I can't wait for when he comes back. I'd like to see him fight someone like Aaron Blake next. Yeah, definitely, because he beat a fucking good opponent in Colin and Barbro, didn't he? Because he's wild, man. Yeah. Colin and Barbro. Opponent's wild. He's experienced. He's got good wins. You know what I mean? He's he's, he's come up and he's he's beat decent lads. So like, in the days, it it's a tough fight, Conan, mate, and he can bang as well. He's a knockout merchant. And he took some good shots in there, George did, but he came through and uh, he came through, obviously, he was a little bit inactive in them later rounds, but obviously when you think about it, he broke his hand and, and that's all you can put it down to. So I, I was moaning about him, I was in the later rounds, just thinking he hasn't, he hasn't thrown enough, but when he comes back and he said, my fucking hand's bust to pieces, I was like, oh, all right, I get it now. It's a shame, isn't it? But yeah, he came through it, mate, and he, his footwork was lovely. He's improved so much with his boxing. A lot better fighter. Yeah, it'd be good to see see him fight someone who who is going to sort of have a boxing fight with. Because he fought Jamie Hendry, who was a bit like wild, yeah. as well as Conan Barbro. Do you know, like someone who we can have like a sort of proper fight with, like a yeah, little chess cool. match type thing. Yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent. You are right, mate. He needs say if, if it's not a Blake, that Matt Bygraves would be a good fight as well. I'd like to see George against that Mac. Uh, yeah, he's got just some good names up there now, wouldn't he? Do you know what I mean? It's, it's I think. Another another good win and a couple of wins, and I think he'll be looking at a UK title next, hopefully. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's good good news for all the boys. It's uh, yeah. everything's growing. You going to Marbella? I will. Yeah, I've just booked it. I booked um, I booked my flights. Um, I booked my hotel. Me and the missus are going, so they'll be there for three days. So I'm just really looking forward to that. Might bring them about and do some call outs in it. Might fucking grab Austin Trout around the neck and swing him about. <laughs> <laughs> fucking right mate you've got to take the belt that's what it's all about shades on belt round your shoulder mate that's come here yeah, yeah. that's it like fucking McGregor off wish <laughs> <laughs> but um, before we wrap it up mate is there anything else that you want to share with us any yeah, sponsors just, or anything like that uh, I just, more than anything mate um, just to touch base on the fact that people don't understand I cut, cut a lot of weight for this fight the most weight that I've ever cut before I cut seventeen pound in a week, fourteen pound in the last twenty four hours. So to do that sort of weight for it and to perform, I know and to perform and come back like that. Bearing in mind, mate, four weeks ago, I remember when I sent it, I was twisting my ankle as well, I sprained my ankle. I trained on a camp with a sprained ankle. I think everyone, everything could could have went against me, and I still made it happen. Sixteen months of inactivity, a huge weight cut, a sprained ankle. Um, and I still fucking put up one of the best performances in my career, which goes to show, you know, what's going to happen next. Um, it's only going to get bigger and it's only going to get better, mate, and I can't wait. Well, thank you for having me on the podcast, brother. I was just going to say there, fucking, um, when you sent me that photo of your ankle the few weeks before the fight, I genuinely thought it was over, like, because yeah. it was black, mate, and you couldn't even see your ankle. It was that small. Mate, my ankle was fucked. It was blown up. It was black and rolled it in sparring. And all I've done was train on it, mate. As, as much as the doctor would tell you not to do it, I trained on it every day because the blood flow helped it and it, it got better gradually. Um, and that's why I got that strip. I don't, don't know if you see it in the ring, but I've got an ankle strap on because I kept tweak, I kept twinging it like every time I was inspiring. And one of the biggest like, concerns was that I was it was going to go in, in the ring. Uh, luckily, it never though. Um, but yeah, man, like I say, like, I had a fucking, I had a tough camp. I had a lot go on. 
in that camp and um, I still come through and got the victory. Um, but like I say, like that, that was 16 months in activity and I just know that I'm going to even get better and bigger and stronger now for the next one. Yeah, 100%, bro. I really, really appreciate you coming on, mate. Uh, we'll stay in touch like we always do. Thank but uh, nice one for coming on, my mate. Thank you, man. I love you. All right, see you in a bit, brother. You too, brother. Speak soon, mate. Bye-bye.